displaced students remain out of the classrooms. Good morning, everyone. I'm LaJon Davis, and welcome to the morning edition, Dorian, the Aftermath. Thank you so much for waking up with us. We now head on onto our streets, where our Lloyd Allen and the morning edition team is standing by with the Bahamas First traffic report. Good morning, Lloyd. Traffic report is sponsored by Bahamas First. First in insurance, today, tomorrow. Good morning, LaDawn. Good morning, Bahamas. Yes, of course, uh, we're reporting your traffic this morning in the area of West Bay Street. This is uh, Bahamar Boulevard, northern end near the Grand Hyatt entrance. And of course, as we have noticed so far, many of those early morning commuters are making their way to their various uh, destinations, moving uh, fluidly. Uh, also, many persons in the area working out as well, and everything seems to be flowing well. Uh, of course, uh, there is uh, some uh, issues in the downtown area as road works continue in that area. So, of course, as as you're approaching that area, we advise that you approach with caution and care. This morning as well, we have uh, Constable Patrick Camp, uh, who is giving us a look at your overnight traffic. Good morning, Officer Camp. Uh, good morning, Mr. Island. Good morning, Bahamas. All right, so just uh, paint a picture for us of uh, traffic overnight. When I spoke to you yesterday, within that 24-hour period, we had some six accidents or so. Um, however, within the last 24 hours, we have had a decrease. We have had some four accidents. And this is a good thing. We just ask that drivers continue to drive with caution and, uh, and have some patience. Any uh, major concerns uh, from those accidents or were they just uh, regular fender benders? Regular fender benders. And they, those two could have probably been avoided if we pay more attention as we're driving on the streets. Uh, I also noticed many of the persons working on this area this morning uh, drive, uh, sorry, uh, work out with um, sometimes dark colored clothes and cars uh, may not be able to see them. Any advice for those persons? Yeah, for, our, for the persons who are exercising in these areas, and not just in the West Bay Street area, but through New Providence and the Bahamas, we ask that you wear light colors and please utilize the sidewalks as best as possible. We have persons who are driving who are still not paying attention, driving and texting, uh, eating, kids that are in the front seat. And uh, just a word of caution to those persons for your safety. Uh, utilize the sidewalk as best as possible and wear reflective uh, vests or light clothing. So, of course, some good advice there uh, for those persons uh, trying to get in shape on this hump day Wednesday uh, in the area here of West Bay Street. But at LaDawn, uh, it's a great day to be alive. And, of course, it's our hump day. Back to you in studio. Thanks a lot, Lloyd. Now on to our top story this morning. Registration for students left displaced by Hurricane Dorian from Abaco and Grand Bahama is winding down at the Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium. The deadline is October 11th. Senior Coordinator for Registration Zane Lightborn says some 1,300 students have gone through the process. 900 placement letters have been generated and another 300 students need national insurance verifications. But Lightborn says he is concerned that a large number of students have still not been registered. Concerned that the numbers that we estimated would come in, that we still have um, some students out there who haven't come in. We're hoping that we can track those, um, those students to find out if they have found other means of going to school, but that's the next part of the process. Um, but it's, it's declining in numbers in terms of the crowds. As you can see behind, um, it isn't as big as um, in the past week or two weeks when we had huge numbers outside waiting to try and go through the process. Um, so we, we are now um, gearing up to make sure that everybody have letters that we have generated. Um, calling is sometimes a challenge. Uh, so we're going to put out a public service announcement for parents to come on specific days to try and get their children in schools. Lightborn made it clear that no child will be turned away and will be tracked down in the country as it is the ministry's goal to ensure that every child is educated. However, he made this strong appeal to parents. Make sure that your children are registered for school through this process if they have been displaced from Abaco and, and Grand Bahama. Because um, once we shut down this process, the children are still going to have to be registered for school. But they won't have the, the um, luxury of the one-stop shop um, deal, per se, that we have here, which is um, the six agencies coming together 
to make sure that you can do all things in one area. Instead, they may have to go to the clinic or go to the hospital, get immunization shots and all of the requirements, then go to social services if they need that. And so busing and transportation, moving around, the time it takes to do these things will be much longer than just coming here and possibly waiting a few hours in the day to get this process done all in one place. Also, just over 1,000 evacuees from Abaco and the nation's second city are still housed at the Kendall Jill Isaacs Gymnasium. One of them is 74-year-old father of five and resident of Abaco, Edward Nelson Reckley. He told ZNS News on Tuesday that his fellow evacuees may only have until the end of the month to stay in the shelter. Reckley says he is eager to get a temporary living space here in the capital before returning home to start the rebuilding process. I plan on waiting there for a while, um, but I wouldn't be here trying to get an apartment now. I will uh, go back home after they don't fix the, the road and the lights, you know, because the way my house is, is like on a farm, you see? I come out of the town, I give my other house to one of my daughters, and I own a farm. And I built this house out there. And how I can come at the same time. When I finish it, and it, it do a little damage to it, but the roof all right. Stadium spokesperson Carlos Reed says law and order at the shelter has been maintained and a large number of evacuees have left. However, he says the future of the remaining evacuees is still being discussed. The numbers are coming down some. Uh, presently, there's uh, 1,019 uh, persons that are uh, occupying the Kendall Isaac. Some persons have moved out. I know that there's some people that are seeking jobs, and some have already found jobs, some that are moving in apartments. And I believe that this situation has to be remedied. Why? Because do Providence can't handle the amount of people that's in it right now. You look at the traffic out on the streets, the traffic is higher than it ever been. So we got to have to make some serious decisions, but I know that this situation that uh, is down at the Kendall Isaac won't be able to continue forever. Uh, there has to be some drastic decisions that's going to have to be made, whether uh, some of these persons are going to be sent back that are not documented. Uh, uh, are we going to make a makeshift city down in Abaco for those that are documented? With some residents from Abaco and Grand Bahama now relocated here to the capital after being displaced by Hurricane Dorian, there's a greater demand for housing. Director of the Bahamas Real Estate Association, Mike Lightborn, says because there is a demand, that will be reflected in cost. Prices are determined by supply and demand, and the demand is, is greater than the supply at the moment. So yes, prices will go up. Um, but as I mentioned, First of all, this is the slowest time of the year for tourism, okay? So the activities in, in Abaco and Grand Bahama um, will certainly help the economy at a time when things have generally been slow. Um, the, the rental market, uh, as long as we have these large numbers of people living on this island, um, <clears throat> it will continue to get tighter. Meantime, police on the island of Abaco recovered two bodies yesterday. Now, according to reports, police found the bodies of an adult black male and a female from what was described as a hurricane-affected area. This brings the number of bodies recovered in the aftermath of Hurricane Dorian to 60. Assistance for hurricane victims and the country continues to pour in. Members of an international chapter of the Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity are here in the Bahamas lending their support. The fraternity's North Carolina Assistant Di District Director, Bakario Bodhi, explained that he and his fellow Bahamian brothers at St. Augustine's University came together after the storm and crafted a plan of action. It has been an extremely um, overwhelming experience to come here um, from North Carolina where we were witnessing the storm through media and television and then to come home to see the devastation. Mm -hmm. And the brothers has been phenomenal in helping other brothers and not just brothers but other citizens of the Bahamas who were affected in Grandmama and Abaco. My chapter has raised over $2,000 locally um, 
in North Carolina and we are going to contribute that to the Bahamas and we are small in numbers there's about 10 brothers um, on the yard and nine of those brothers are Bahamian so it was pivotal for us to make a contribution in any way shape or form uh, to the Bahamian people. Senior members of the fraternity joined with local members and traveled to Grand Bahama this week where they donated and distributed relief supplies. President of Alpha Phi Alpha Everett Ward says in addition to the initial effort, they will continue to develop more plans to aid in relief. The first phase of our effort, we are doing a major fundraiser to raise financial support to help that will go directly through our local brothers here to help in many areas uh, immediately to help with supplies that will help the address the needs that people have currently. And then the second phase, we'll really work with our local members on reconstructing um, areas with construction supplies. On Saturday, we spent the day in in Freeport helping move supplies. So we formed a human chain of taking supplies from a trailer, making sure that they got to distribution centers and actually got to people to help them. Well, let's get you caught up with our weather outlook for today. We had a few showers overnight, but to tell us more about weather conditions is Chief Meteorologist Basil Dean. This weather report is sponsored by Bank of the Bahamas, the bank of solutions. Good morning, LaDawn. Yes, we woke up to some over night uh, showers, but our ZNS Tower Cam right now overlooking the eastern portion of the province showing much improved sky conditions. And in the tropics, we have uh, two areas we're looking at. Uh, the first one as well to the east of the southeast Bahamas. This has about a 10% chance of development over the next uh, five days, so that's very low probability. And in the south northwestern um, Caribbean Sea, there's another area just to the south of Cuba and to the west of Jamaica. That too around about a 10% of development. And then, of course, there's Lorenzo out there racing towards Ireland. We'll tell you more about that later in the newscast, so stay tuned. Outside of our studios, mostly cloudy, temperatures 78 degrees, relative humidity quite high at 90%. East northeast winds at 9 miles per hour. The barometric pressure, 1,012.3 millibars, that's 29.93 inches, and it is steady. Temperatures around the islands this morning, Marsh Harbor at 78, 78 in Green Toll Key, Freeport at 78 degrees, 80 degrees in the Berry Islands, Allistown, Bimini, 81 degrees, 80 in Harbor Island, Roxanne, Elutra, Otterstown, Cat Island at 79, 79 also in Stanley Key, Kemp's Space on Andros, and Fresh Creek in Central Andrews. More 79s in San Salvador and Rum Key, Ragged Island, 81 degrees, Clarence Town, Long Island, Crooked Island, 81, 79 in Betsy Bay, Maguana, Ackland, at 79, 80 degrees in Matthew Town, Inagua, and Turks and Caicos Islands at 80 degrees. Your boating forecast for today in the Northwestern Islands, easterly flow 12 to 18 knots, wave height 3 to 6 feet, high tide 1018 this morning, low tide at 444 in the afternoon. For the central Bahamas today, easterly winds as well, not as strong, 10 to 15 knots, and the wave fights 2 to 4 feet. For the southeast Bahamas, light and variable winds with flat seas 1 to 3 feet. That's going to do it for your first look at weather in the morning edition. Stay tuned. Your forecast for today and tonight is still ahead. Thanks a lot, Basil. And still to come in the morning edition, House members returning to business today following a long summer break. So stay close. Look, it's simple. Fidelity can consolidate all your bills with their debt consolidation loan. Give you one monthly payment and money in your pocket. So let me get this straight, Miss Financial Coach. You say something about cash in my pocket? Yes. And a savings plan with 5% interest? Wow. Finally! A bank that's looking out for me. What do you want me to sign? That's not all. We also offer comparative interest rates and free financial coaching. Miss Fidelity, you ain't hear me. Well, do I sign? <laughs> We're more than just a company. We're a family of professionals who thrive on giving our customers our very best every day. From our humble beginnings in 1919, we've been there for generations of families and business owners. This year, as we celebrate our 100th anniversary, we owe our longevity and our success to you, our valued customers, our loyal employees, and the communities we serve. Thank you, Bahamas. J.S. Johnson Insurance Agents and Brokers, giving you peace of mind.
The Atlantic hurricane season runs from June 1st to November 30th. When a hurricane alert is issued for your area, which indicates the possibility that you could experience hurricane conditions within 60 hours, you should begin the initial stages of preparation for the storm. When the storm is 48 hours away, a hurricane watch is issued. Once a watch is issued, be sure to get updates from the Met Office via television or radio. Get your battery-powered radio ready. Keep your emergency supply kit, blankets and sleeping bags handy and keep children and pets indoors. Be sure you have extra cash and a car tank full of gas. Fill all prescriptions. A hurricane warning means that a storm with winds up to 74 miles per hour or more is 36 hours away. At this point, secure all windows with shutters and plywood. Place your valuables in a waterproof container and store them on the highest floor in your home or in the safest area. This public service announcement has been brought to you by the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas in conjunction with the National Emergency Management Agency. Hey! Long time no see. You hear me? Long time no see. All fish, stew fish, stew conch. I love it all. Tourists come here to take our tours, experience our sun, sand, and sea, and they also spend money around town. I used to see a bunch of hogfish around here, but nowadays, I hardly see any. You protect one area, the fish do their thing, make a bunch of babies that spread all over the sea. What's the problem? If we protect certain parts of our sea, it keeps all parts working right. I was against that phrase, but knowing what I know now, I totally agree having marine protected areas. I support marine protected areas. We support marine protected areas. Look for Bahamas Protected on Facebook. Sign the petition. Sign the petition. <laughs> Assembly reconvenes today following the summer break. House Speaker the Honorable Holston Moultrie says there are a number of things he would like to see taking place. Among the expectations is the involvement of the various House committees. Mr. Moultrie would like to see these groupings before become more active. There are eight such committees focusing on the development of Parliament. The House Speaker expects them to be more involved in reviewing the rules of the House. Now, according to the Speaker, there are certain areas where he has to use his discretion Discretion, noting, for example, there are no rules relating to social media. The Shane Gibson bribery trial resumes today. On Tuesday, key witness Jonathan Ash took the stand. Ash testified that he was awarded a number of contracts, and after government fell behind on payments, he began to pay his workers out of pocket. About the third week in January 2017, Ash said he took his concerns to Permanent Secretary Jack Thompson, who headed the National Recovery and Reconstruction Unit under the former administration, who referred to him to Deborah Bastian. Ash says he was owed between $800,000 to $1.5 million by the former administration. He testified that between January 17th and 21st, 2017, he received nearly $1 million in checks. Ash also testified that on several occasions, he met separately with Gibson and Bastian and paid them thousands of dollars. Now to Andros, a community seeing some positive changes. Island Administrator Joseph Ferguson says, while economic progress is slow due to a few new developments, the island is experiencing an upward trend. Andros is progressing very uh, slowly, but it's progressing in the, in the right direction. Uh, Bomsy is uh, progressing very, very good. Uh, I'm very impressed with the production they carrying on here with Bombsy. Uh, we're growing most of our winter crops and we are doing some fish farming and, and agriculture is on the move here with, at, at Bombsy and I'm very impressed with Bombsy. Uh, the roads are being repaved and restructured and that's going on very well. Mm -hmm. Most things in Andrews are going on pretty well. Construction is up a little bit. Things are, things are working in the right direction. Coco Key uh, and the Berry Islands has taken a lot of poison from Andrews and they're now working over the Coco Key. So our employment is, is trending in the right direction. Stay close, we've got more news right after this. You're watching the Morning Edition, Dorian, The Aftermath. Come 
favorite tweets, Paradise Island is the best kept secret in the Bahamas. Located directly next door to the Atlantis Resort, you'll receive all the privileges of an Atlantis guest with all the benefits of a comfort suite stay. Enjoy everything Atlantis has to offer, including Aqua Venture Water Park, plus all the amenities of comfort suites, free Wi-Fi, free breakfast daily, and kids stay, play, and eat free. Visit ComfortSuitesPI.com. In 1953, the United States began using female names for storms, and by 1978, both male and female names were used to identify northern Pacific storms. This was then adopted in 1979 for storms in the Atlantic Basin. The National Hurricane Center does not control the naming of tropical storms. Instead, there is a strict procedure established by the World Meteorological Organization. For Atlantic hurricanes, there is a list of male and female names which are used on a six-year rotation. The only time that there is a change is if a storm is so deadly or costly that the future use of its name on a different storm would be inappropriate. In the event that more than 21 named tropical cyclones occur in a season, any additional storms will take names from the Greek alphabet, Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, and so forth. Here are the names of storms for the 2019 Atlantic hurricane season. Andrea, Barry, Chantal, Dorian, Aaron, Fernand, Gabriel, Umberto, Imelda, Jerry, Karen, Lorenzo, Melissa, Nestor, Olga, Pablo, Rebecca, Sebastian, Tanya, Van, and Wendy. This public service announcement was brought to you by the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas in conjunction with the National Emergency Management Agency. Nature-based tourism supplies almost $50 million in revenue for Androsians every year. These priceless resources will continue to provide renewable benefits for thousands of people for years to come, as long as we take long-term action to preserve what's rightfully ours. The natural environment has played a vital role in our culture and economy for generations. Let's take care of nature, and nature will take care of us. Welcome back. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and this morning we have in studio breast cancer survivor Anita Roll, who is hosting a breast cancer awareness fest this weekend. Ms. Roll, welcome to the morning edition. Thank you, Latoya. So, Anita, talk to me a little bit about the breast cancer awareness fest and what actually inspired you to host this event every year. Okay, this actually is the second event. We did it the first time was last year. It was a tremendous success for the first um, time. And uh, this year, we're anticipating an even greater response from the general public. Um, my reason for doing this actually is actually to give back. As a survivor, you go through so many things, especially the mental and financial um, struggles associated with cancer. And I think it's only fitting having gone through it and um, still conquering and being um, victorious to give back. Mm -hmm. And it's been an eight-year um, yes. cancer survival yes, journey yes. for you. Yes, Talk to me has. a little bit about your journey. Um, well, my journey started about eight, it was eight years ago. Well, I had a lumpectomy, which was, um, it was like a stage one cancer. Um, the lump was very small. It was only point something of a centimeter. I had the lump removed and I had to do undergo chemotherapy as well as radiation. Um, six rounds of chemo, six weeks of radiation. And... Um, you know, by the grace of God, I'm still here. Um, it wasn't easy, but a positive attitude actually attributed to the overall, my overall well-being and success. I know you're <coughs> excited about this weekend. Um, talk to me about some of the new vendors that came on tap um, for, for this year. Well, this year, actually, we had about 20 vendors last year. This year, 
I had to end up turning down for six. We have uh, 50 vendors that will be on site. Um, Corporate Bahamas actually came on board um, a lot more than they did last year. And even so, with persons calling in and wanting to find out about the event, wanting to attend, um, the response has been tremendous. Um, we had a roughly, we did a time. registration process last year. We had about so six per, 600 them, persons both um, that attended last year. This year so we're, this attended, we're sure. anticipating about at least double that amount. Um, and all the proceeds that we make, we donate to the Jenny Dean Caring and Sharing Cancer Support Group, of which I am also a member. Mm -hmm. And I know that there's been an increase in the number of young women um, being diagnosed um, with breast cancer. Talk to me a little bit about early detection and getting those yes. mammograms on time. I would say um, annual physicals, not, even, not only annual physicals, but mammograms are very important. Um, I would also say it may have a lot to do, I personally feel, with the um, your... Overall, overall healthy state of your body, your mind, etc. All of that I think attributes um, to cancer in some way. And so I would ask persons to try to live as healthy as possible, eat as healthy as you possibly can, get your fitness in, which of course come out to Sweat Fat. We're sure we're going to have some of that for you, along with um, browsing the vendors, you know, contributing um, or giving back to society in terms of you have a lot of entrepreneurs out there who are you know, relying on events like this, pop-up shops, to actually make funds or to actually um, increase their profits. So let's try to be our brother's keeper. Let's look out for each other. And um, I would have liked to invite everyone to come out and support on Saturday. Registration, where um, and when will the event take place? Well, the registration is actually on site. We have, we'll have a registration booth set up. It's only $10. And um, once you pay your $10, you'll receive... Um, um, we, have, we, giving, we have some promotional items we'll be giving out as well as you'll receive a breast cancer ribbon. And um, once you get in, you are at liberty to actually, we'll have a lot of sampling. But of course, bring a few extra dollars because we're going to have vendors on site that will actually be um, selling goods as well. As well, you know, it'll be products as well as food, drinks, etc. I would also like to at this time um, say that there is a fitness group that is actually working along with me in the organization of this. Mm -hmm. And the name of it is Perfect Fit Lifestyles, um, Fitness Lifestyles. And um, they have actually contributed a lot in terms of to my overall healthy state as well. I'm a member of that group um, in terms of exercising every week. They will be out there conducting a soak aerobic segment. We'll have two segments. And then we're also going to have a lot of entertainers out there as well, Carrington. Um, we have Carrington McKenzie as well as Simone Bo, Nita Ellis, Novi, and um, Nishka from the Rhythm Band. We're also going to have the Saxons will be doing a rush out, out there. So at those John Canoe fanatics um, mm -hmm. as well as we're going to also have um, it's several other entertainers. We have quite a new, we, we have a tremendous support this year from the entertainment world as well as the corporate world. So Sweatfed is going to be a tremendous success. And you're excited about Sweatfed Definitely, again. definitely. Anita, thank you so much for joining us here on the Morning Edition and best of luck on your Sweat Fat um, Breast Cancer Awareness thank initiative you too, this Madonna. weekend. Thank you so much. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Ministry of Youth has declared October National Youth Month. In recognition of this occasion, we highlight some young Bahamians. Now in this report, we bring you the story of Rochelle Morrison. If you want to go where you've never been, be prepared to do what you've never done. That quote best describes the process I employed to overcome some personal weaknesses I suffered from. As a ninth grade student at Anatol Rogers High School, I struggled with an identity and confidence issue. Making friends was difficult because I didn't know who to associate with, was concerned about how I was perceived, and questioned my inner and outer beauty. Being just adequately productive, I decided to perform introspective surgery on myself. At that time, in what seemed like a miracle, my then homeroom teacher, Mrs. McQueen, an English teacher, did something that changed my life. During the class session, we usually write in order to do some type of diagnostic, just for us to kind of see where the students are. And after doing that, I realized that Rochelle was a brilliant student. She was an excellent writer. She was somebody who was able to put her thoughts down on paper in a time frame that other students would struggle with. And so seeing that she had the potential to be such a great writer, I took interest in her. Inspired by her confidence in me, 
I focused more on schoolwork. You agree. My essays were met with high praises from Mrs. McQueen, as she was especially impressed by my literary skills. Literature is a subject that you don't learn by rote. When you read a poem or you read a story, you kind of put yourself in there. You make the analysis of what the writer is trying to bring across to you, as well as your own experiences. And that is what Rochelle did. Self-discovery is a lifelong process. But now, a few years later, I'm a more confident person and on my way to infinite success. Because that can benefit As an aspiring literary artist and a born-again believer, I'm presently pursuing a Bachelor's of Arts degree in Journalism and Communication at Omega College in New Providence. In recognition of National Youth Month, I hope my story inspires you to overcome your challenges, discover your God-given purpose for living, and become a productive citizen. Reporting for ZNS Network News, I'm Rochelle Morrison. Good story there, Rochelle. Thanks a lot. Stem cell and its development across the globe continues to attract feedback in the healthcare community. A special conference opens here in the capital today, focusing on stem cell and the latest findings. Lloyd Allen joins us live from the Conclave site. Good morning again, Lloyd. Well, Ladon, it's almost exactly one month since those are, uh, some, uh, as well described by some as a three-day of uh, terror as the passing of Dorian made its way through the Bahamas. And today we're starting a um, summit that's uh, supposed to be a three-day conference to heal many persons who are going through those challenges. Heal Inc. Future Health Summit is one of those organizations that's uh, starting the process of regenerating the process of uh, discussion and also um, discussions about really getting started um, back in the jumpstart of uh, healing. This morning I have with me Dr. Desiree Cox, who is the organizer for this grand event. And uh, tell us a bit about uh, how, you get, how you got started with this. Thank you very much. So this is the focus, uh, as you mentioned, regeneration, resilience, adaptability. The aim is to make sure that we create the ability for everyone to have optimal wellness. And for that to be affordable, accessible, and available. And so people need to be educated on that. <clears throat> this is our second year. We're at the Grand Hyatt. Uh, I'm very excited about what this will make possible for Bahamians. We start at 8.30 today. Uh, this, If you're a medical, if you're a volunteer, uh, anyone who's interested in optimal health needs to be here. You need to learn about these things to put in our individual toolkits for our own personal re regeneration and the regeneration of our communities. It goes right through until 5, 5.30 is the opening ceremony. The Governor General will be in attendance at our opening ceremony. The opening ceremony is free to the public. And we will have our celebrity guest lecturer, Dr. Bruce, uh, Dr. Dr. Joe Dispenza, who will be lecturing about how to reposition your body, retune your mind. That is free. Uh, and that's, we're very excited about that. So uh, stem cell is uh, the uh, topic of the day. And uh, of course, one of those speakers uh, at the event is uh, Mr. Bruce Crier, not to be uh, confused, uh, and he's uh, going to tell us a bit about his experience and what he's going to be adding to this uh, summit and conference. Thank you very much. It's a delight to be here in the Bahamas. Uh, two angles why I'm here. Number one, I'm a survivor of cancer and of staph infections and of the need to have both of my hips replaced and a few other colorful uh, conditions that I had to endure. And so I'm constantly on the lookout for things that can build my resilience, build my regeneration, etc. I've also been teaching on this topic for the past 20 plus years at Stanford University and other places around the world. And so both between my personal experience of having having had to recover from life-threatening conditions, but also kind of intellectually and academically, I'm interested in any kind of tools that can help people um, bring that sense of resilience and creativity, which everyone knows, boosts our well-being. When you're doing something you love to do, whether it be dancing or singing or writing a poem or tending your flowers or playing with your pets, all these creative enterprises boost our well-being. 
We know this. So I'll be talking about that. I'll actually be singing about that. And each day, in fact, Dr. Cox has been gracious enough to ask me to be part of um, sessions every day here at the event, as well as a keynote that I'll be giving today uh, right after lunch. And of course, uh, um, here in the Bahamas, we say it's rude to ask someone their age, but of course, uh, I think it's more so about how old do you feel. So this is something that's really uh, intended to help people feel younger. Absolutely. That's so spot on. To feel the sense of thriving and vitality, that is really uh, what we're looking for people to experience throughout their all the different phases of their life. And Bruce has talked about some of the things he'll be doing. You'll be learning about stem cells as a specific part of that biology. But you can also experience things like hyperbaric oxygen, uh, the kind of laser light stuff that you saw on Star Trek that's real. So people can also experience that in our exhibition uh, booth as well. So we invite you to go online, www.healinc future health summit dot com register now and look forward to seeing you here now i was one of those persons who also made my way down to abaco following uh, the tragic uh, dorian and uh, trauma is one of those big words that keeps coming up is this conference uh, designed for persons who is really trying to get back to a place of normalcy following an experience like that you're going to hear, hear exactly people who been in those places in different parts sharing how they uh, made the journey, giving you specific tools on what you can do. And also, if you're supporting someone who is in that process, a family member, a volunteer, you're going to learn how to best support yourself as well as to support them. So sometimes in trauma, you can't hear it all, okay? So you might want to bring a family member to come and listen on your behalf. They'll be holding in that information and help you on your journey. Now, Bruce, of course, uh, you may not have been here during the storm, but you are obviously a survivor. And so, of course, uh, talk to us a little bit about um, what advice would you offer for persons who are looking to um, really get back to that place? Mm, wonderful question. Well, to me, uh, anytime we're thinking of resilience, one of the most powerful tools is to ask ourselves a question, what makes your heart sing? What makes your heart sing? When I was recovering from cancer, I loved taking pictures. I took photos. It inspired me to take pictures of nature and beautiful scenes that I could actually appreciate. I found that I was drawn to inspirational music because that lifted my spirits, which was so important in the resilience process. So one of the things I love about this, the design of this conference is each day we'll have a 30 to 45 minute session involving music, some movement, some breathing practices, a little bit of meditation. So if we have been come out of a very traumatic time here, these periods during the conference will be a chance to recharge, to restore, to gain perhaps a wider perspective when the, the shock of what's happened to us is, is kind of all we can see. I know that. I know that feeling. So I, I'm, I'm hopeful this can be a, a part of the rebirth here in the Bahamas. Now, um, another concept that uh, keeps coming to mind as well, bridging the old with the new, stem cell being one of those new um, aspects, meditation being one of those uh, ancient aspects, but together, uh, obviously, your intent is really to regenerate the whole person. Absolutely. We have been fortunate and excited with the concept of stem cells, the biology of it, the idea that in our own bodies we have a system, a kind of cell that can go to wherever we need it to go and help our healing. And so we have therapies that have developed around that. But we also want to recognize that that's not the only form of regeneration or regenerative therapy. And for each of us, we want to have our own unique combination that's right for us. And so this summit is about learning about all of the different types of regenerative therapies, including stem cells, learning and learning from the experts, the people who are creating those technologies, learning how to work them together with for yourself, and not forgetting what we already know in our soul. Bruce has talked about the creativity. We already can feel that but also learning the science of why that is also true. So this is truly a place to be educated. You can get CME points. If you're a continual medical education, you might need those for your regeneration. That is, you can get those. If you're just interested, uh, you, can, you will be able to learn from this because the speakers are like Bruce's showing, TED Talk-like in their presentation, very clear, very accessible. You'll be able to network and meet people. This is 
where you want to be. So that's Heal Inc. H E A L I N C Future Health Summit. www.healincfuturehealthsummit.com. Grand Hyatt Bahama today, Wednesday, all day Thursday, and ends on Friday half day. All right, sounds like three days of magic. Reporting here from the Grand Hyatt Bahama, Lord Allen, Ladon, back to you. Thanks a lot, Lloyd. Well, it may not be the official character day around the world, but at Thelma Gibson Primary, the teachers and faculty are ensuring every day is viewed as character day. Yesterday, school officials put on a special assembly for students to celebrate character and all the traits they would have learned during the school semester. Excited students from each grade took center stage, acting those different traits out for their fellow students. Thelma Gibson Primary Principal Donna Brown. We focus a lot on academics, but we must be mindful that these students are going into the international world. And so we are preparing them to fit in the global world. And so we ensuring that they have respect, they are kind, they have integrity, they have empathy, and all of the traits that will ensure that they become productive citizens, not only in our country, but in the global world. The Atlantis Resort is inviting you to eat at one of its 14 restaurants for the next two weeks for an extraordinary taste of the Atlantis. Eat is billed as an event that can please any pocket with three and four course meal options. Jiminy Swain tells us more in this report. Great food, great atmosphere, absolutely wonderful ambiance is something that we all love to experience when dining out. Well, extraordinary taste is something that Atlantis has underway. And to find out exactly what it is, we turn to Sean O'Connor. He is the Vice President of Food and Beverage here at Atlantis. So, Sean, give us an idea of what this eat is all about. Well, this is all about eating, drinking, savoring, and enjoying life in, in a great festival here at Atlantis. It's going to be for about two weeks long. And we started off with our brunches, and we're really being vertical with all of our concepts. And we have fine dining to casual to quick service. We're going to have a beautiful uh, party in the in the village, right around the uh, marina village in our harbor. Um, it's going to be a great selection of uh, spirits and food and restaurant offerings, and it's really just great value. Now, obviously, you just mentioned great value. Everybody is often cost conscious. So, how does that factor in for the average diner? Well, we have a little bit of everything for everybody. So we've got uh, the quick service where you can have a slice and a beer, you can have a burger and a beer, you can have a sausage and a beer at Pirate Republic, or you can go to one of our casual restaurants, or you can even have a fine dining dinner at uh, uh, Fish for $65 for four courses, which is an amazing value. And we're not making small, small portions either. You can enjoy. Well, thank you so much, Sean. So Eat will be on for the next two weeks. So if you're looking for something fun to do, and of course, to fill your belly and please your palate, then this is the place to come. Jimmy Nita Swain, ZNS Network News. Thanks a lot, Jimmy. Some scrumptious food there, Fisher. I know you're about to have a workout and we're going to burn up some of that fat this morning. Jimmy, you'll have to be joining us soon <laughs> with some of those workouts if she continue to eat all that food, yes? It's all about ladies, man. It's about the ladies. The ladies are really, really doing some good things around the world for the team. Bahamas, John Krell in the mm. WNBA last night, Sean A. and Tanita yesterday over there at the IWF World Track and Field Championships. You here on the set at Zednest, <laughs> and I also have some special ladies in the studio today. So it's all about the ladies. That's why God bless you with four good daughters. <laughs> and Shawnee, I know Shawnee is about to, to, to run today. Or is tomorrow, that tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Finals is tomorrow. Everybody's going to be in front of the television sets watching that. I'll be off. I'll be at the watch party over at the Thomas A. Robinson Track and Field Stadium. It's going to be exciting. Expect some great fireworks. But it's all about today. Tania Gaitha in the 20 meter finals. All that coming up in sports. Also a special treat with the Zumba ladies. I will be waking off this cut <laughs> this morning. I'll do that on Saturday. That and more ahead in sports. <laughs> Hi, I'm Stuart Cove, and for many years, I've taken pride in introducing young Bahamians and international visitors to the wonders of our Bahamian underwater world. Our marine ecosystem helps to keep our tourism industry and fisheries sector healthy and lucrative. We must all do our part in protecting it for future generations. And that is why I ensure our staff and customers are taught about the importance of coral reefs. I do this and more to protect our underwater life because I care. Do you?
Sunshine, Bahamas, the glory of the Lord is upon you. Tune into the Morning Glory Show with your girl, Divine Lady Vanessa Clark, right here on the light, 810 a.m., Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 1030 a.m. Morning Glory, yeah. <laughs> what I love most about working for the Bahamas tonight is that we don't only focus on New Providence. We cover the entire Bahamas. We have a team here in the Northern Bahamas that is ready to bring you the stories, the people, and the news that matter to you. From point A to Z, and covering hurricanes to elections and everything in between. Good morning once again. We end today's six of the IWF track and field. Championships over there in Doha, Qatar. Pretty good day five for our athletes, especially for the ladies. On to the women's 400 meter semifinals now, where Shawnee Miller Uiba was back out after a jogging win in an opening round heat. The second runner, one of two in this field. Here is the irrepressible figure of Shawnee Miller Uiba. Jackson, probably helpfully, just outside. second runner one of two in this field here is the irrepressible figure of Shawnee Miller Weibo Jackson probably helpfully just outside I was really good uh, you know I just give God thanks and praise for it uh, to be able to get through the rounds as easy as that um my coach's main uh, thing to me coming in was, you know, just to get it in as easy as we could. And that's the instructions that coach gave me, and uh, I just wanted to make sure I was clear of the field before I started, you know, to really uh, ease it in and, and shut it down to the, for the home finish. But we're, we're coming for the title, and so uh, we're really pushing hard towards it, and if God has it in, in mind, then uh, we go ahead and we get it. The, the title, I really don't care what time we get the, t uh, the title, I don't care if it's 50.5, and so the main thing is just to come out here and get the title. If we run fast, we run fast, and if we don't, then next time. I'll move on to the 200 meter semi-finals where Tania Gaither was running out of lane number nine. Respond. We'll come back to that as soon as we possibly can. Tanya Gaither made the final, and Gaither, who made the final two years ago, on the outside. This is a big opportunity in the absence of the second fastest problems. Respond. We'll come back to that as soon as we possibly can. Tanya Gaither made the final, and Gaither, who made the final two years ago, on the outside. This is a big opportunity in the absence of the second fastest problems. Out. I know I had to try to hold that for as long as I can. I knew my start would be um, the determining factor, so I just went um, and I said, come get me, and just finished strong. Once the girls came and got me, I said, you know what, don't panic, get technical, get, use your arms. I rarely ever use my arms, so I really tried to focus on doing that to bring me home. I felt like I executed it really well. I run the 200 differently than I run the 100. I feel like I'm able to input more of my heart because I really, really love the two, so that's what it came down to. Hey, it's all mental at this point. Um, like I was telling them, it's all in the mind, no matter how my body feels. If I want this bad enough, I'm going to make it happen. And I feel like I want this more than anybody. Steven Gardner was also yesterday in the men's 400 meters, where he cruised to a time of 45.86 seconds, and he will be in the finals come Friday. Also, last night in the WNBA, let's go look at that right now, John Crell Jones and the Connecticut Sun, well, they even their series in this best of five affair. John Crell with a record-setting performance in this race, in this uh, game, as we look at some of the highlights from last night, she finished with 32 points, 18 rebounds, and four block shots at halftime. She had 18 points and 12 rebounds. She joins 
uh, some great players like Lisa Leslie and Candace Parker as the only players in double NBA finals history with a 30-15 game. We had some of the ESPN commentators calling out the Bahamian Beast. Once again, she finished with 32 points, 80 rebounds, 9 of offensive rebounds. This is also an NBA, WNBA record. Game 3 is Sunday at a hometown of Washington. Now, the government secondary school sports association was hoping to get its 2019-2020 schedule underway in short order with volleyball. But President Varel Davis says, as it stands right now, they will not be starting on time. I'm supposed to start next week, Monday, which is the 7th, um, but uh, due to the non-payments of officials, um, right now, season is on hold. Unfortunately, none of my officials have been paid at all um, from November when we started volleyball to now, it's now September, October 1st, and none of them have been paid as yet. And it's not my choice, it's the choice of the officials. Um, they said to me that they will not um, call any of our games until they are being paid. The good thing about my members, they are treating their teams cross country and volleyball and as soon as I guess the payments come through for those officials we will begin our season. We have a lot of work still to do. Um, each year we're trying to get better and better um, so I'd like to see some improvement um, in some areas um, but our coaches are excited. The kids are excited to, um, to start school sports and I pray and hope that things work out. New Orleans Softball Association playoffs continuing last night at the Bankers Blue Hills Field in the men's game. The chances mighty mid spinning the Commando Security Truckers to the tune of 9 2 to even their best of seven series at a game apiece. We came up with a game plan. Uh, we executed. Our aim was to make better contact. Um, we, we did that tonight. Uh, we got a, a pretty good lead. We started scoring some runs early. Uh, we had we had a few innings where you know we had uh, some 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 lapses, some some def some defensive lapses, but we were able to pull through with our game plan, executed to the best of our ability, and that granted us the win tonight. We just didn't contribute. Like we had some runs on base, we had some runs left on base. Um, we just didn't contribute, and like, that's all I can say. Okay. What's next? And as you can see, I'm now joined in studio. They have on all this green on our backdrop. The Bahamas Zumba Party Fest is this coming Saturday. It's a special event. Uh, Anna, tell us about it this weekend. Um, so, good morning. So, our Zumba party is going to be this Saturday at the Malia Beach Resort. It's starting at 10 a.m. Doors open at 9. From 10 to about 12, it's going to be a fun-filled event. Um, and we are going to be dancing as one. Uh, in aid of Dorian Relief. So our proceeds are going to Dorian Relief. It's going to be a fun-filled hour of just getting up and dancing Bahamas. So we invite you all to come. Tell us what, what it encompasses. What's it all about? Um, well, you know, Zumba is a high-energy... Hard, hard. <laughs> it's a high-energy dance workout. Um, you know, includes all of the different rhythms. We got the soca rhythms, merengue, salsa, a full-body workout. So we'll be doing that on Saturday. I'm um, just creating a very fun environment um, for all of us to dance together and just, you know, be able to put a smile on everyone's face. So how long will the sessions last? Is it a sprint or is it a marathon? Oh, <laughs> it's kind of a sprinted marathon. Um, so we are going to do 45-minute sessions, mm -hmm. um, starting at 10, a 45-minute session with a break in between, um, where we ha we're going to be giving away uh, numerous uh, raffles. We have raffle giveaways, and then we're going to start off with a battle. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a little battle, and then we're going to go back into another 45 minutes. How will you be raising the funds? Well, our ticket donations. Mm -hmm. um, the tickets are $25, and they can be purchased from numerous locations. Um, MacFit, Evolve, Empire Fitness, um, and Weight Watchers. Mm -hmm. And so the $25, that's a part of our way of raising the proceeds as well as we're collecting items on site. Well, I saw these two young ladies come inside here with you. I got a pretty bit, little timid because the last time they were here, they worked me and I had to take <laughs> at least five days off. Now, what can we expect in terms of performance this coming Saturday? Well, the performance is going to be hype. Um, we expect a full crowd because tickles, ticket sales are going quickly. Um, I'm sold out of tickets. Empire is sold out of tickets. So ticket sales are going really good. It's that high energy. Are we expecting that again this weekend? And so for, the, for folks that have never tried it before, tell them come on down and try it out. They laughed at me, so tell them come see our series <laughs> today. Well, come out on Saturday at Malia, 
9 a.m. The show begins at 10. Um, you're going to have a fun-filled workout, and see you there. Mm -hmm. And uh, once again, this is in, in aid of Hurricane Dorian. You want to stress yes. that... Uh, be there on time. We want everybody to get the full workout. Yeah. We also want to say a special shout out to our sponsors and they're listed on social media as well. Mm -hmm. So now I was going to work out with you girls this morning, <laughs> but I'm going to save my energy for Saturday yes. because I want to go. That's why I asked you if it was a sprint or a marathon. So I'm going to save all my Zumba for Saturday. We would love to see that. <laughs> uh, see you on Saturday, girls. Thanks a lot. See you on Saturday. Bye. For the latest news and highlights in Bahamian culture, tune in to the new Junkanoo 242, Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. on the ZNS Radio and Television Network. Radio Bahamas, 1540 a.m. on 104.5 FM and TV 13. Each week, hosts Arlene Nash Ferguson and Darren Bastiat engages listeners with some of the movers and shakers of Junkanoo and Bahamian culture. Don't miss Junkanoo 242, Saturday at 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. on the ZNS Radio and Television Network. Hey, have you heard? ZNS is everywhere you are when you download the new ZNS app. Whether you're on the move or just kicking back. Miss something on the news? It's there. Want to keep up with a live update? It's there. Or just want to listen to your favorite station? It's there too. Download the app now from the App Store and Google Play Store. The natural resources of the Bahamas play a critical role in supporting Bahamian livelihoods. For example, the fishing and tourism industry, which include fishermen, seafood exporters, hoteliers, dive operators, restaurants, and others. Collectively, they generate approximately $1.5 billion a year. Therefore, we must respect and preserve what we have. These resources belong to us. This is my livelihood. This is my livelihood. This is my livelihood. So let's all do our part to maintain our local economy and a good quality of life. Remember, if we take care of nature, nature will take care of us. In our final look at weather in the tropics, we have this area of showers and thunderstorms well to the east of the southeast Bahamas. That has about a 10% chance of developing over the next uh, 48 uh, to 72 hours. And then we have another area in the northwestern uh, Caribbean Sea, just to the south of eastern Cuba and uh, just to the uh, east of uh, Jamaica. This too has about a 10% chance of developing. And uh, once it does that, we expect it to move towards the west, so no problem for us here in the Bahamas. Meanwhile, that uh, mid to upper level trough across the central and southeast bombers will trigger showers and thunderstorms over the central and southeastern islands today, some of which will be heavy at times, resulting in flooding in those low-lying areas. And over in the far eastern uh, Atlantic, we still have Lorenzo, which is now packing winds of about 90 miles per hour, pulling away from the Azores Island, but taking aim now for Ireland, and it should reach Ireland sometime by tomorrow evening as an area of low pressure. Today we're looking at partly cloudy conditions with a few showers looking around. High temperature around 85 degrees and tonight it's going to be mostly cloudy. A couple of showers again in the mix with your low temperature getting down to 78 degrees. The extended weather forecast over the next uh, seven days. Showers off and on into Friday. Things are improving a bit on Saturday and that should continue right through the weekend and into the early part of next week. And those uh, daytime temperatures as you see they staying out of the 90s hanging right there in the upper 80s. Done. Great weather there, Basil. Thanks a lot. And that does it for us this morning. See you right back here tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m. for more Morning Edition Dorian, The Aftermath. For the entire Morning Edition team, I'm LaDawn Davis. Make it a fabulous Wednesday, everyone.